Um, Heather Eccles has been buying and selling antiques for 15 years, and she's the owner of Cannonball Creek Antiques. Hopefully she'll be telling us a little bit more about her business, too. She's a ninth, genera the ninth generation in her family to carry on the tradition of buying, selling, and appraising art and antiques. She's been selling antiques and golden since 1994 and providing professional appraisal service since 1998. And her specialties include photographs, fine art, books, silver, porcelain, 19th and 20th century furniture and decorative arts. And she also specializes in Colorado historical antiques, including Coors Porcelain, and she'll be discussing all of them today, which she brought some beautiful mm -hmm. examples to. She recently worked at the Golden History Museums as a consultant for the Coors Porcelain on display, which I hope you'll get a chance to look at if you haven't done so already um, on the show and tell exhibit. So thank you very much. And please help me welcome Heather here. <laughs> Well, I want to thank everyone for coming today, and I would love to share some of the knowledge that I've acquired about Coors Porcelain and Pottery. Um, early on in my buying and selling career, I always wanted to fo follow along in my father's footsteps, and he was a fine art dealer. Um, I found and discovered Coors Porcelain here in town. We bought a little house across from the porcelain plant, and I've been interested in it ever since. It's a wonder wonderful part of our history, it's beautiful, it's uh, a, a collectible, and it's also one of our current industries. Um, now, there are lots of things I would, I would like to share what I know, but I also realize that there's probably more history in this room he here today than I have personally myself. So if anyone would like to share a comment or add anything, please raise your hand and I'd love to learn more and hear more um, about Coors Porcelain and Pottery. Um, we are going to start with the beginnings, the pre-prohibition history of Coors. I didn't turn this on. Can you hear me okay? Okay, sorry about that. Now, Adolf Coors started brewing beer in Golden in 1873. Prohibition had already come to a number of the eastern states, and this had to be one of the reasons behind Coors diversity, as it would not be long before Prohibition comes to Colorado. Now, in 1887, in order to keep up with the brewery's need for bottles, Coors started the Colorado Glass Works on the site of today's porcelain plant. The plant closed after 19 months um, because of unsettled glass union disputes. The building was unused for 20 years. Now every now and then in the neighborhood we'll find a great old bottle that came from the bottling works and those are very rare and you know just very interesting to find and see. Now in 1910 Coors offered free use of the empty bottling plant building to John Harold for a pottery. Now Coors had seen Harold's work at a display in the Brown Palace Hotel um, and there was a club called the Denver Ceramic Club. Now Harold had had some art pottery on display that was made from clay in the, in the gold from the golden clay beds. Um, Coors approached him and offered him free use of the building and I believe that Adolf Coors could see what a plus to the community a porcelain plant would be. And he could see that Harold had the know-how to start the plant. Now Harold had been a designer at Weller and Roseville Potteries before coming out to Denver. Harold produced fireproof china and some art pottery. This ware has the Harold Golden Pottery Mark. It's very rare and hard to find. And I have a piece here that has the old mark. And that was only used for a short period of time. And I'll walk that up both ways so you can see. Just a few years, I believe, did this pottery have this mark. Can you see it? All right. What does it say? It says Harold, Golden, Colorado. Did he come from Ohio? Yes. From Statesville? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
And we have one of the rarest pieces ever on display here at the museum. There's an art pottery vase. And it's a beautiful piece. It's white. It's in the display case. And I've only seen one other in all of my hunting and collecting and, and looking for it. So we're very lucky to have that here. Now, in 1911, Harold leaves Golden Pottery to seek employment at Western Pottery in Denver. That's only one year. So uh, the citizens of Golden buy stock in the plant, and Coors takes over management. So A. Coors was president, A. Coors junior vice president, and H. F. Coors managed the plant. And I think it's just wonderful. So it seems that uh, we needed um, Harold's expertise to get things going but really Coors was the businessman and the manager that really got it going. Now, I have a few old pictures of the plants, of the plant. This is one of the older views with the smokestack, with all the kilns. And then, Oh, I'd say this is probably from the 30s or the 40s, and this is the plant, of course, almost today. This is probably from the 70s. I think it's probably even grown since then. Okay, now, because of World War I, there was an embargo on German goods. Germans were the major producers of porcelain, scientific porcelain. Um, at this time, the School of Mines conducted successful tests of Coors scientific porcelain, and Coors started production of its scientific ware. Coors gained national recognition for this ware, and the plant was off and running. This is a more modern example of the Coors scientific mortar and pestle. So is this, and this is a little crucible. And this one's very rare because it has a dark inside. You don't see this very often. And this was just a gift today. Oh. So thank you. That's the example of the scientific wear. Um, now, 1916, Prohibition comes to Golden. Um, Coors focused on his other businesses, malted milk, butter, near beer, cement, mining, real estate, and porcelain. This is an example of the malted milk crocks, soda fountain items. Now people brought, of course, milk, there's so much history, but people brought milk to the, uh, to Adolf Coors in milk jugs that said Coors, Adolf Coors on them for the malted milk. Now, in 1920, Coors legally changes the name of the porcelain from Harold Golden Pottery to Coors Golden Pottery. Um, the mark may have changed as early as 1916. I'm trying to think what I might have. That's an early piece. Okay. Um, from the 1920s to the 30s, production was mainly scientific, industrial, commercial, Glencoe and Thermal Porcelain Hotelware. Now this is an example of the Glencoe Hotelware. There were, there were brown and green and a rust colored. This was a special order for Molly's chicken pies. <laughs> and I found this at a church sale last year and I was so thrilled to find it for 25 cents. <laughs> I just love it. Can you imagine? What's There's today? It's priceless. We should go around the antiques roadshow. Yeah. So it's hard to say. My dad would always say it's worth what someone's willing to pay, which is true. Okay. Now, the 1930s, Coors Heyday. Innovative colors, depression era tableware, art pottery vases. Most of this up here would be considered uh, the 1930s, or, or, or all of it. 
except for this little end here. Now, we had the art pottery vases. This one is called the golden style. They came in three or four different sizes, all different colored glazes, and many different styles. This little vase here was made for the Colorado State Fair in 1939. It's stamped that way on the bottom. And you could buy this at the fair with, an, and with a beer. Pro no, probably not with a beer because prohibition. But, um, but with a beer. Oh, they did sell beer mugs, so this had to be after prohibition. They had wonderful yellow beer mugs that said Coors Golden Beer. Now we have the thermo porcelain dinnerware tea and coffee pots decorated with gold paint and decals. This is some of the thermo porcelain. There are quite a few different patterns. Open window is one of the favorites. Hollyhocks, a beautiful open window. Um, little bird cage. This is considered the thermo porcelain. This is tulip. There's flora lee, hawthorn, open window. And let's see the mark on the back. Coors Thermo Porcelain. I love this ware because it's, it's indestructible. I have a big casserole bakers and steak plates that I use at home. And they make the best, the uh, casserole makes the best enchilada, ca enchilada uh, casserole ever. Okay, um, malted milk crocks and soda fountain items. I only have a picture of that now. The collectors really love the malted milk items, and I don't have any left. Figurines and employee lunchbox pieces and whimsies were popular at this time. Um, on the lunch hour, I've heard that the employees could bring in a mold they'd like to make something with. They would make a specialty item, maybe four, five, six, whoever else wanted one, glaze it and take it home. Has anyone else heard of this? No. Well, um, a friend of mine, Danny Mayo's mother worked at the porcelain plant, and he has a few of these pieces. And I asked Dan, I said, are you sure they used the porcelain from the plant that they didn't bring in finished pieces and glaze them? And he said, no, they brought in the molds, and they made these wonderful, unusual items. And uh, they turn up every now and then, but they're very rare. I have a surprise for you at the end, and I'm going to show you one of the pieces. OK, we have the six innovated color tableware lines. Mellow tone. This is a piece of mellow tone here. We had pink, um, past, all pastel colors, pastel green. Um, light blue, and it's marked with a wonderful back marking. It says Coors Melotone Pottery, and there is a sunshine, sunshine rays on the back. The other dinner line looks just like this, and it's called Rockmont. And those colors are darker colors. Um, a dark blue, green, and now I'm trying at the other colors. I know there's an ivory and probably a maroon. I don't have a piece of that right now, so I could show you an example. Coors Cora Auto. This is Coors Cora Auto, and it's marked su as such. These colors are beautiful, and they have kind of an organic design to them. You don't see as much of that either. And then the favorite rosebud. Everyone loves, loved the rosebud. The colors are beautiful. They're bright and cheery. You know, it was depression time and people, I mean, you put this on the table and it brings a smile to your face. It's just, they're just so pretty. Um, we have orange, yellow, rose, and blue, and ivory. The the, the orange and the ivory were produced later. The original colors were rose, yellow, and blue.